Welcome to Listen, I Tell You a Mystery. My name's Paul Harvey, and together we're going to travel around some of the most beautiful places in North Wales. And as we go, we'll be uncovering nine mysteries found in the Bible. The human heart has always been fascinated by mysteries. The Loch Ness Monster, Agatha Christie, UFOs. But in the Bible, the word mystery means something far more profound. The Greek word is mysterion, and it really means a wonder of God made known to us, a spiritual truth revealed. The journey begins here in Bodnant Garden, beautiful gardens in North Wales, in springtime, just a few days before Easter we're filming, and Easter reminds us of life, where Jesus came back to life again, but it also reminds us of his death. And the first mystery we're looking at is the mystery of the cross. Jesus himself said, unless a grain of wheat falls into the ground and dies, it remains a single seed. But if it dies, it brings forth many seeds. Like a seed, Jesus died for us to bring forth fruit. Paul the Apostle takes up the theme. He says, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. So it's at Easter that the eternal man, God made flesh, died and was buried in the ground on our behalf to take the sins of the world onto himself. This is the mystery of the cross. We're going to hear a bit more about this in the song, Calvary to Paradise, which we filmed at Pistich Reader, the highest waterfall in Wales. Victory in Jesus Christ, conquer in the grave. Risen Lord, Son of Man, heaven's door, the bread I am, evermore God's holy land, gloriously reigns. I looked and saw eyes of blazing fire, his face resplendent as the sun, his voice the sound of many waters. Behold, I am the living God. Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty. He who was and is and is to
Why are we here at Bodnant Garden in North Wales? The reason is, is because it's full of life. Wonderful blossoms and these beautiful daffodils, which are a symbol of new life and light. We're filming just a few days before Easter, when Jesus died and rose again. Paul the Apostle wrote, listen, I tell you a mystery. We will not all fall asleep, but we will be raised and changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. Death, where is your sting? Oh, death, where is your victory? We have the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is our second mystery, new life out of death. Let's listen to another song, We Shall Be Raised. We will not sleep, but we will be changed in a flash, in the twinkling of an eye. The last trumpet shall sound, the dead will be raised, and in Christ we will all be made. Shall be raised, and we shall be changed, and so shall 
we bear the likeness of Him, reigning in heaven, and we shall be free. new life all around us. And here we have blossom, which reminds me of the fragile nature of our lives, transient. We're here one day, gone the next, just like the blossom on the trees. How can our fragile lives be connected to the God of all the cosmos, the God, the creator God? And I've asked Jonathan to join us here to share just a bit. How is it possible, Jonathan, that we fragile and transient as we are, can have a relationship with the creator God of the universe. Well, I was raised in a Christian family. I knew of the creator God, but I didn't know the creator God. You know, I didn't know him. Um, and it was when I was 10, uh, I gave my life to the Lord. And what does that mean? Um, well, what, what it means is that I realized I was sinful. I was like this blossom here, but for a season. One minute I'm here and one day I won't be. That's the nature of human life and that we're sinful, we're imperfect, and yet we, we see this around us and think, surely somebody must have created this and the creator God did, but he's not only the creator God, he's also the savior God. He sent the Lord Jesus Christ to die on the cross to forgive us um, who are sinful, who are dirty, who are blemished. Um, and so when I was 10 years old on a Christian camp, I realized my need um, for savior, for forgiveness, and I, I simply asked him, will you come into my life and make me new? And so that's how you know the creator God. You ask him, um, you believe in him and, and say, I need you. Wonderful, thank you so much. And uh, we'll hear another song now called Remember Your Creator, which is taken from Ecclesiastes chapter 12. It talks about the transient nature of life, but to remember our creator.
Doesn't this remind you of Psalm 23? He leaves me beside still waters. Peace comes from God, and we can only experience true peace in Him. Jesus said, my peace I leave you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled, and do not be afraid. Our next mystery is the peace of God. We can experience the peace of God in our hearts at all times, even in difficult trying circumstances. So if you haven't experienced that, turn to him, look into his word and trust him. Let's listen to a song that talks about the blessing of peace. We filmed this at Hlin Padan in Snowdonia. Love the Lord your God. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. Gracious unto you, the Lord. 
turn his face towards you and leave you be. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Closely connected with the peace of God is the presence of God in our lives, which is our next mystery. And I have Rose, my wife, here to share about the presence of God. Is that something that you would say you have experienced? Yes, I would. I've been a Christian for a long time. And it's just walking by faith with the Lord, um, enabling him to sort of to walk through and in us really, in who we are, the people that we are, and trusting him. And is there a particular example you can share with us when you felt the presence of God? Well, I can remember that first year that we were in Spain. We were living in Madrid. As for, missionaries, As yeah. missionaries for, for 15 years altogether. But initially, we didn't have the language, we didn't have the culture. We'd arrived in Spain with all our shackles and two little children, and we were trying to kit out a flat there. And all the circumstances just came together and just sort of came in on top of me really and I remember you coming into the living room and saying well we're off to church now victorious missionaries going off to church and I just felt I couldn't do that I wasn't in the right place so I remember you kept took the children to church and I found a little stool which I put on the balcony and as I sat on that stool just trying to get my, my head around everything there was a shaft of light and the Lord, in an inexplicable way really, just lifted me above my circumstances and enabled me just to sit and to worship him for who he is, the almighty God. That's lovely, that's a lovely image, the shaft of light coming down, the presence of God with us. Let's hear a song that tells us more about this, life with the presence of God compared with life without the presence of God. It's called Lord Without You.
That was a multicultural version of the song Lord Without You. South African lady and a Spanish lady sang the vocals and Adolfo Rivero, Spanish guitarist on guitar. Now the next mystery is one that can't really be described through any symbol we may have, but I'll try to give a, a slight idea through using my hands. Trinity isn't a word we see in the Bible, but everywhere, especially in the New Testament, we see evidence of three persons of our God at work. We have God the Creator, and He moulds us. He created the world, and He moulds us like the potter moulds the clay. And the Son, who prays for us, He taught the disciples how to pray, and He still intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father in heaven. And we have the Spirit, who is symbolised in a dove, a pure white pristine dove who descended on the Lord Jesus at his baptism. Another way to look at it would be the Father who holds out his hand because he is all love. God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son so that anyone who believed in him would not perish but have eternal life. And then we have the Son who points the way to heaven. He is the way, the truth and the life but he showed us how to get to heaven through faith in him by his grace. And we have the Holy Spirit who can be symbolised as a fist because the Holy Spirit is all powerful to bring down nations and to rise, raise up the needy and the poor. He's a spirit who is also gentle and comes alongside us. Not very uh, complete picture, of course, of the Trinity, but just a small idea. Now our next song is called I Need Your Hand to Guide Me. I need your hand to guide me your presence, Lord, beside me. There's no one else who could ever take your place. I need your peace to still me, your Holy Spirit to fill me. There's no one else who could ever And I will run to you, my father. 
eagle wings, my father. I owe you everything, my Jesus. Send down your spirit, Lord, and fill my soul again. And I will run to you, my father. For there is none like you, my Jesus. Send down your spirit, Lord, and That was I Need Your Hand to Guide Me. Well, we're going to leave Bodnant Garden soon, leave the beautiful daffodils behind and head back across North Wales, continue our journey. And we're going to meet a lady called Beryl and uh, have further discussions and talk about the mysteries that God has revealed to us. Yeah, and the river, the water. Hello, Beryl. Oh, hello, Paul. Here we are back in Wrexham and we're joined here by Beryl. Thank you, Beryl, for being with us and sharing your testimony. My pleasure. I understand you have a very special 100th birthday coming soon. Yes, I have. I've been well, and God willing, it'll be next month, the end of next month. Wonderful. So we'll expect a card from the oh, Queen. Oh, certainly. <laughs> I'm a little older than the Queen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, Beryl, have you known Jesus throughout your whole lifetime? No, not really. I was brought up in a Catholic convent where I heard about the Lord Jesus, and I knew that there was sin in my life. I knew that much. But I went my own way. And when I was 40, a lady came to me and started talking about Christ. And I was amazed. And she kept on and talked about being born again, which I knew I wasn't because I was going to hell in my mind. Nevertheless, <coughs> she kept on and I went to the Bible study in Bradley Road. <coughs> and there I heard the word of God and it struck home to me. And he read a passage from an Old Testament book, which struck home to my heart instantly. And I knew what I was in the sight of God, although I had known it before. Eventually, after being in these Bible studies a long time, I went to a, a meeting in Wrexham, and, a pass, and a, an evangelist was there. <coughs> And I went because I wanted to hear the gospel again. And uh, he said, anybody would like to stand up who has maybe under wisdom, under sin, and would like to talk about it. And I thought, no, I don't want to stand up. But there was a gentleman in front of me and he said, get up. And of course I didn't, but immediately I did. I was bound to get up. I got up to my feet and I confessed my sin before the whole crowd and I, and I felt amazing when I sat down because I knew I was born again, which was absolutely wonderful. That's tremendous to hear, isn't it? And you've been a Christian ever since. And would you say, Beryl, that you have any fear for the future? No, I've got no fears for the future because I know the Lord and I know that he is watching over me and that there is a time when he'll call me home to him. That's wonderful to hear. Thank you so much for sharing with us. That's a pleasure. There we have a wonderful testimony from a Christian who has no fear for the future. And that's our mystery, the mystery of Christ's return. We know that he is coming back. Every eye will see him. We're going to listen to our song 
which is taken from Revelation 1. Every eye will see him coming on the clouds. and is and shall be. Every eye will see him, Jesus. Here we are, we've come on to Anglesey, Innis Mon, and uh, we've left the ma mainland behind us. We're on our way to the beach. And uh, here we are at this almost unpronounceable name for a non-Welsh speaker. I'm gonna give it a go in a minute, forgive me, Welsh speakers. But it's a little bit like a mystery, isn't it? But if you have the key, then the mystery becomes clear. Clamvaya, Pulquingich, Go Gogarich, Un Drogwil, Francisilio, Go Go Go. Almost there. Another beautiful place, another mystery. Number eight, the kingdom of God. Remember, in the book of Daniel, chapter two, King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon has a dream of a huge statue. Head was of gold, the chest silver, thighs of bronze, legs of iron, feet mixture of iron and clay, and then a rock cut out, not by human hands, came and shattered the statue. Daniel was the only one who could interpret. He said, O oh king, that head of gold represents your kingdom. The rest of the statue, other kingdoms that would follow. And the rock cut out, not by human hands, represents the son of man who comes with an everlasting kingdom. 
in chapter 7 of Daniel, the Son of Man is ushered into the kingdom of days and it says his kingdom is an everlasting dominion, a kingdom that will never fade away. Now, Jesus, the Son of Man, came centuries after Daniel. And what was his message when he came? It was that the kingdom of God is near. He is the rock cut out not by human hands who inaugurates this kingdom that will last forever. On this earth, kingdoms rise and fall. Poets like Shelley in Oz Ozymandias mention this. Look on my works, ye mighty in despair. Nothing beside remains round that colossal wreck. But boundless and bare, the lone and level sands stretch far away. So earthly kingdoms disappear, but we know of a kingdom that lasts forever. This is the kingdom ushered in by the Son of Man, the rock that was cut out not by human hands. Isn't that the sort of kingdom that you want to belong to? Mystery number nine, our final mysterion, or spiritual truth made known, is the mystery of eternity. Ecclesiastes chapter three says, he has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in the hearts of men. We have eternity in here. There is a yearning in the spirit of human beings for something beyond. Now here I am at Clandwin Bay, and beyond that is the Irish Sea. Beyond that is the huge Atlantic Ocean. On the other side of the world is the Pacific Ocean, a vast expanse. Now, we can't see it from here, but I know it's there. I've seen a map. I've also read the Word of God. I know eternity is waiting for all those who trust in Jesus Christ. Some people say there is nothing after death. I prefer to believe the word of God, which says we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what on what is unseen. For what is seen is only temporary. What is unseen is eternal. Isn't that the eternity that you would like to have waiting for you? Wouldn't you like to say with David that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever? Our final song is called Your Everlasting Arms and I can sing to an infinite God because I know I am safe in his everlasting arms. Your everlasting arms are reaching out to draw me in. Your never-failing love will lift me up Like an eagle on the wing Your ever-waking eyes Are watching as I come and go Your ever-listening ear is bending near All my thoughts and fears you know Jesus, my friend Shepherd and my guide Even if I rise on the wings of the dawn You are at my side Light of the world Dawn of every day Safe within the warmth of your everlasting arms I will always stay precious blood you shed on the cross of Calvary took away the pain the guilt the shame set this sinner captive free your full atoning grace 
rescued me and made me whole. Holy Spirit, come, come, Father, Son, be the captain of my soul. Jesus, my friend, my shepherd and my guide, even if I rise on the wings of the dawn, you are at my side. Within the warmth of your everlasting arms, I will always stay. Jesus, my friend, my shepherd and my guide. Even if I rise on the wings of the dawn, you are at my side. Light of the world. That song was your everlasting arms and the phrase is taken from the book of Deuteronomy. The everlasting God is our refuge and underneath are the everlasting arms. We're here at the last location of our journey through North Wales and where better to end our journey than in Eruri, Snowdonia and climbing Mount Snowdon, the highest peak in Wales. the summit of Snowdon, Ur Widva, and uh, stretching out below us is Snowdonia, Eruri. Here's where we conclude our journey through the beautiful places of North Wales, and we also conclude our journey through the mysteries of the Bible. Remember we started with the mystery of the cross, then the mystery of new life in Christ, and then relationship with God. Jonathan shared about that. Then we talked about the peace of God and the presence of God. Rose shared about the shaft of light. Then we talked about the Trinity and Beryl talked about her confidence in Jesus. Jesus will come again. She knew that she, she knows where she's going. Then we talked about God's kingdom, an everlasting kingdom not made by the hands of men. And finally eternity as we looked out across the sea. So if you know Jesus, I hope our program has given you a renewed sense of joy and wonder at these mysteries that the Bible tells us about. And if you don't know him yet, thanks for staying with us on the journey. And I'd really encourage you to take the journey further because it's a journey into life. It's a journey into eternity.
the chosen one of God, the cornerstone. Alpha and Omega, the Lamb of God once slain, now sits on the throne. 